Alright, it is a crisp 56 degree Monday morning and I'm loving this. Just a few months ago, I feel like I was complaining about the heat. This is amazing, but uh, your boy's starving, so let's go get some food. And we have a big old week. So let's start a uh, little driving montage and get some food and let's talk about it and let's go. We got a little truck action shot right now. I'm waiting for my food. Yes, this place offers curbside pickup and I figured it'd be a great opportunity to hang out and talk to y'all. So we have a big list this week and that's uh, low key terrifying, but super exciting. And it's only terrifying because I still have all of these other responsibilities. I still work a day job and need to obviously focus on that. I'm a husband, I'm a dad, I still have like I said, all these other responsibilities and uh, it's exciting to have this amount of work on Benchbox and terrifying at the same time. But we're keeping up momentum and that is going to be the main driver for this video is keeping up momentum. So get yourself a fun drink, get a snack and let's lock in together and help each other out and support one another. But as I mentioned, we have a long list of chores and exciting things going on this week. So we need to make the production clerk. Right now we're still using the development server even though it's my production super base. Don't tell anybody. I need to push a new beta build for all of my iOS and Android beta testers. And uh, feedback is going pretty well. Not amazing, but pretty well there. And speaking of beta testers, I'm actually gonna be setting up a meeting this week with one of my beta testers to have a better relationship with them and build that connection and get some of the more precious feedback and details that I want. Asking questions is a lot easier than going back and forth on email. And I need to schedule a whole lot of content because one of the books I'm reading right now is called Traction. It's by the guy who invented DuckDuckGo and uh, it's his whole story about how he had success in finding all of these businesses. So it is something that uh, truthfully I am lacking on. I've not come up with the full marketing strategy. I've not started creating organic content for Benchbox. So I need to put in a little bit of groundwork and at least start that process and start building some of that traction. But we're gonna grab this food. We're gonna head back home because we need to lock in. We have tons of code to push. We have tons of content to schedule. We have a couple meetings to set up and uh, yeah, we need to lock in. So pull up fun drink, get yourself a snack. Let's lock in, let's support one another. Let's go. I think I just had my first real awkward moment recording clips for YouTube where I'm waiting on this delivery, curbside pickup, sitting here in my truck, recording the video, talking to y'all, and this poor employee has my food standing outside my truck window, just patiently waiting for me to finish my video and look at the window to recognize <laughs> that they're standing there with my food. So I feel like a jerk. I told her that she should have just said hi to YouTube, said what's up to the video, but uh, she laughed and she went on with her day. So uh, I'm gonna add money to my tip <laughs> because I feel like a little, uh, little bit of a sleazeball here making YouTube videos for y'all, ignoring the people here in my life and uh, awkward. Back to the video. We just got home and before we dive into the code, I just need to say, I grew up all throughout cities. I lived on the east side of Pennsylvania. We're talking New Jersey, Philly, New York City. Spent a lot of time in all three of those cities. And ever since moving out to the country, one of my favorite things is farm fresh eggs. Literally, I can drive, and it sounds so silly. I can literally drive down the road three minutes tops. I, I had a look to make sure I gave you three minutes. Three minutes tops, and I can have a beautiful dozen farm fresh eggs for I'm not even kidding you, $3.50. If you bought these eggs in a grocery store, like look how huge that is. You know, normal size, but this one's a Mondo. Uh, if you bought these in a grocery store, this would easily be $8, if not more right now. So do yourself a favor, see if you have any local egg, or I guess chicken farmers, get yourself some local eggs, and I promise you, you will never go back to buying grocery store eggs. And. Uh, it's the, it's the little things in life. It is the little things in life that make me happy. And uh, farm fresh eggs on a weekly basis is my favorite thing. <laughs> but enough about that and let's dive into the code because we have a laundry list of things to do today. And I'm very excited to share that with y'all. All 
right, so we now up in a real production clerk. And one of the things that's kind of a pain in the ass with clerk is you can clone your development environment into your production environment, but it does not copy any of your development users over, which I'm not sure why. Supposedly, that's a security feature. Somebody drop a comment down below and tell me why it's insecure to copy users from dev environment over to production because uh, I can't figure that one out. It doesn't make sense for me. You could clone test users over, I suppose, you know, where it's like clerk underscore test and like maybe that would be annoying. But the reality is it's, oh my gosh, it is so windy outside my trash can just fell over. Uh, yeah, I better go get that. It's trash day. <laughs> I better go get that. But yeah, I have no clue why it is a security violation or problem so somebody with uh more security chops than i drop a comment down below let me know maybe i'm just overlooking something that is super obvious but uh we're up in production one thing that is really annoying about clerk when you migrate from development to production is you can ask the clerk team to export your users and then they give you a little project a little repo to quickly import the users that's super nice. But what's really annoying is the user IDs don't carry over. I guess the user ID is probably immutable or something. So when you go into the production environment, the original user ID from the development environment gets tagged as the external ID in the production environment. Not useful literally at all unless I want to rewrite my authentication handling to look for external ID instead of user ID. So super annoying clerk. This one just seems like a not developer friendly experience uh, as you're migrating through these different environments. Low key, it's kind of a pain in the ass. It makes sense if they're coming from a different environment and maybe the key doesn't match the structure that y'all generate. But when it's going from one clerk to another clerk, just let the user ID be overwritten. It should be an admin type service because it's happening on your back end. So that's kind of a gripe I have with clerk. Another big gripe with clerk here, and this is a, a huge notice for all of my React Native developers. If you are a React Native developer and you're using the clerk provider, you have to have Wi-Fi access when the user opens the app because Clerk needs to touch, you know, the mothership. Otherwise, it's gonna black screen your app for like 10, 15 seconds of just nothing before it reroutes you and redirects you to the login screen. This is a huge user experience problem, in my opinion. I know in the future, I'm just gonna get complaints on people be like, oh, the app just had a black screen for a while and eventually put me back to the login screen. Clerk. Fingers crossed, I hope y'all fix this. And y'all can hear the Discord, the dev club, going chatty, chatty, chatty in the background. Uh, and if you haven't heard, there's a Discord community. We are the only Discord that donates to kids in STEM. So check it out, link down below. But yeah, problems with Clerk. Clerk's still a really good tool. I'm still gonna stay with Clerk, even though I ditched Superbase auth. And uh, yeah, I hope they fix it soon. But we need to start diving into some more code, so let's go. I think sometimes some people believe that uh, this like tech startup, whether it's in the city or me at my house, is just kind of all fun and games and you're just cranking code and making millions of bucks. <laughs> that is not true. I just spent the last one and a half hours of my remaining time working on this product today debugging freaking React Native. Occasionally you'll get these stupid issues of dependency errors. So it's like RNS screen modal something blah blah blah. It happens with the safe area view all the time. And uh, truthfully, it's because I'm a bad dependency manager. I oftentimes will just do npm install insert tool. That's not the right way to do things when you're dealing with expo, you should be doing an npx expo install tool. And that'll make sure you're downloading the compatible version, or at least most of the time the compatible version with whatever expo SDK version that you're running. So don't be like me use expo to install your tools. But I just spent the last hour and a half debugging what the hell was going wrong. And I actually found out this pretty sick tool called expo doctor. So I want to show that real fast. So I'd imagine that Expo was getting really tired of people complaining about dependency issues. So they came out with Expo Doctor. I don't think this is brand new, but it's new to me. You run it just from your CLI within your project and, and it'll check all of the things and versions of products that you do have. So you can see here, it looks, check the packages that match versions required. Something is failing and it's giving me some advice here to run this command. And I believe it is some dependency issues once again. Let's go ahead and say, yeah, go fix my damn dependencies. So it didn't fail, thankfully. And let's go rerun Expo Doctor and see what it thinks. Perfect. Now that I'm 
clean state. This is something that I'm gonna use all the time to make sure that I'm staying up to date. And I actually noticed that when you're in EAS builds, Expo Doctor runs too, uh, and gives you some of these warnings. So that's pretty cool. Didn't know about that before. And I think that's just a sick tool for you to keep in your arsenal, honestly. There is some annoyances doing React Native development over something like Swift, and that's just dependency management. And I think uh, Expo Doctor is a pretty sick tool that I'm gonna use over and over. Uh, it's gonna be part of my pipelines whenever I build them, don't have them yet, but whenever I do start building pipelines to do my builds and my submits and blah, 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 I'm gonna definitely make sure that Expo Doctor is part of that process uh, because I just wasted a whole hour and a half fighting what was resolved in like 30 seconds. And that is the development world. All my devs out there, you know what the hell I'm talking about. It's always a single line of code, a missing semicolon, <laughs> you know, parentheses, something stupid. That is always plaguing us for, you know, 85% of our day. So I am unfortunately now out of time. My family comes home soon, gotta start dinner, gotta get the, you know, I'm on bedtime duty tonight. Uh, us dads out there, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, let me jump off here, get back to a little bit of tidying up, get back uh, to my family and the day job. And with that, I will see you all next week.